Last spring, we introduced you to explorer Pascal Marceau. Yeah, she splits time between Canada, the North Shore, and a tent in the middle of nowhere <laughs> on her endless expeditions. And today, we check in with her, fresh off a recent expedition that did not go according to plan. You just feel so good. We met explorer Pascal Marceau as she was about to embark on a two-month trek across Canada's high Arctic, her longest exploration to date. I'm going to be really, really honest. I'm actually scared. This time, we found her in northern Minnesota. Now I'm up here in Hovland in northern Minnesota, just staring out at Lake Superior in a beautiful little cabin in the woods. It's, it's great. To hear her tales. This expedition is so rich with stories. I mean, they couldn't get a more pure environment. We were surrounded by nothing but pure nature. We had one Arctic fox came to visit, and then we had a raven, a couple, a pair, and they followed us for almost a week. We were in one of the densest, most populated polar bear areas in the world. Pascal and her partner had four polar bear encounters as they pulled all their supplies on sleds and skis. Some dicey, others less so. But one moment almost ended the entire thing. We had an Arctic explorer's nightmare. <laughs> My partner fell through the thin ice. We were headed towards this kind of crux of the expedition was to round this cape. It's quite pliable. It's like plastic ice. It moves around like a carp. We knew it was thinner, but we were checking. Suddenly, her partner was fully submerged in the Arctic Ocean. It was actually just like you would see in the movies. You know, you try and get to the edge and it just keeps collapsing as you put in weight on it. So instinctively, you just get into rescue mode. And I just jumped on my stomach and I laid down flat and reached out my people to get him to he could grab he grabbed a hole of the basket and that's when it was just like okay when a lack of ice forced a change of plans extending the trip four days and 30 kilometers pascal and her partner ran out of rations they actually couldn't come to where we were because the ice is too thin in the past you could just plan an expedition and you knew the ice was there the change is you can't rely on ice conditions. In ways, the trek took a toll on her body. Our body was very depleted. But it also strengthened it. Marceau's rheumatoid arthritis symptoms disappeared. I did some regular blood work after the expedition, and all my rheumatoid factors were gone. You know, vitamin D is huge in that, and we had it 24 hours of light for the expedition. So we had a lot of light, and there was also being in movement all day, every day. The piercing silence of this sparsely traveled path made space for breakthroughs. It's hard to put in words. I think I haven't been in outer space, but I would have described it as what an astronaut would probably experience in outer space. Like there was no noise. It was magical. It was calming. And the wonders it did for her mind, her perspective, opened up a whole new world. If you actually allow yourself to dream, like, take some time, Carl, allow yourself to just think up of things that you want to do. Next for her, uh, I kind of miss the mountains. A new ascent in the mountains of Alaska with a freshly sharpened mindset to find a way and figure things out even when it seems impossible. You know, the ups and downs of life and the challenges, they seem to just kind of level out a little bit. Everything is just calmer and smoother, and you don't get rocked or phased by hardship. Aren't those beautiful shots, too? Yeah. I mean, it was just her and her partner out there, so she took those. Uh, she is sharing more from her expedition tonight at the North House Folk School in Grand Ray. The event starts at 7 o'clock in the Blue Building. Uh, it's free to attend. She's also doing some virtual presentations on January 16th and 24th. You can find her website cool. for that. I, we see the beautiful pictures. We think about how cold it must feel. I never thought about how silent it must be. Yeah. No cars, no trains, no planes going overhead. Mm -hmm. Never thought of that. No noise pollution, no light pollution. Yeah. I mean endless light too how does she keep her resolve after going through those scary experiences oh, she said you know it was kind of like one giant metaphor for life because she's like there were times where it's not like a path that's groomed yeah. so you are creating the path as you go and they'd run into ice blocks where they're like we can't keep going like mm -hmm. i don't know what we're going to do right now and then she's like then we would keep going and a path would just sort of open up so she said it was very poetic <laughs> in that way where like wow. things feel insurmountable and then you kind of learn to adapt and surrender to the experience of it mm -hmm. is how she described it um and that was the finding away yeah. somehow no matter what um so you get your breaks they definitely had their challenges too that mm -hmm. she did not plan for but um she's super inspiring